everyone! Welcome back to Forward Therapy. My name is Kelly Troutman. I am a certified hand therapist. Today's video is going to be part one of a multi-part series about Dupuytren's disease. So I do have a previous Dupuytren's video, but I wanted to post kind of an updated video, give a little bit more in-depth information, um, and yeah, kind of provide just like a more recent video about the topic. So today is part one and let's get into it. Okay, so first I think it's important to know what is Dupuytren's disease or Viking's disease. In Dupuytren's disease, the palmar fascia or the tissue that's under the skin in your palm starts to actually shorten and become thicker over time. Gradually that can become progressively worse and it can actually lead to what we know is a Dupuytren's contracture where a finger will actually curl down into the palm and it will be you know, kind of contracted in that position. Typically we can't open it from that position. So as you can imagine, that can be very functionally limiting um, and very difficult for people to do daily activities or things that they enjoy doing or need to be able to do. So there are essentially three stages of this disease of how it presents. There is the early phase, the active phase, and then the advanced phase. So essentially three phases of progressively worsening symptoms. In the early phase, you might start to notice that there's some sort of module or some sort of dimpling going on in the palm. You might feel kind of a lump. Usually it's located right at the base of the fingers in the palm. You'll start to notice kind of that, that lumpiness going on there. Um, sometimes it can actually be mistaken as a trigger finger, um, you know, so it's something to kind of note that that is sort of a differential diagnosis in that early phase of Dupuytren's disease, but typically that's how it will start in the early phase. You'll have a lump or a nodule in the palm of your hand. And then we move into the more active phase where you might actually start to see some long ropey cords start to form. So there will be sort of this dimpling of the skin. You might see kind of these extensions of these cord-like structures that are pretty firm to the touch. Um, and the, you know that's, that's kind of where that fascia is starting to shorten and thicken gradually in that active phase. And in the advanced phase, a fibrous cord has formed that begins to start pulling the finger down into a flexed position. Um, keep in mind this can happen in any of the fingers, but typically this is a more advanced phase of the condition where that finger is starting to pull down into the palm. We call that a Dupuytren's contracture when you can't physically extend the finger out of that position. And usually it starts with kind of a slow, gradual tapering. That can happen at um, the PIP joint of the finger, so that middle knuckle. It can happen at the MCP joint or the big joint, the big knuckle. Or it can happen at both. And it can happen on any finger and even the thumb. What you might start to notice is that over time, you're not able to lay your hand flat on the table. So what causes Dupuytren's disease? What are the risk factors? Unfortunately, the cause of Dupuytren's disease is not known. Um, it is otherwise known as Viking's disease and it does tend to be more prevalent in um, Scandinavian descent. It can happen in any ethnicity or any race. It just tends to be a little bit more prevalent in Scandinavian descent. It is more prevalent in men, it is a little bit more prevalent in people over the age of 50 and also people that smoke. There are other risk factors and there's certainly more research coming out about this disease all of the time. Unfortunately, there's just no one cause that they've identified yet. So how can you tell if you have Dupuytren's disease or not? First things first, if you are having any change in the function of your hands or if you have you know, any changes in symptoms there or if you suspect that you may have Dupuytren's disease, a first important step is to go to your doctor. Have them do an exam so that they can tell you, you know, kind of what they think is going on and they can start to 
make a plan of care for you and monitor your progress over time. This is a progressive disease over time. Um, and for many people, it doesn't progress to the stage of contracture or limiting function or pain, but it can. And so it is important to have a medical professional monitoring you as changes occur over time. Oftentimes, the way that you can do a test at the doctor's office or even a way that you can self-test yourself and monitor changes over time is by performing the tabletop test. So I am going to post um, a scientific article about that below in the comments so that you can have access to that article as well of the tabletop test. Essentially, all you're doing is placing your hand flat on the table and if you're not able to lay that finger flat, so if the finger kind of bends up or you just your palm kind of can't lay flat on the table, then that is a positive test. And the doctors can measure the angles of the joints to tell you, you know, either kind of, okay, I weighed it out, it's more in the active phase, or is this more progressing into the advanced phase of the disease where maybe we need to do some intervention. Now that's a little bit more about Dupuytren's disease. Again, it's kind of that abnormal palmar fascia or thickening of that tissue below our skin in the palm. Um, it typically has three phases of progressively worsening symptoms. It'll start with a nodule, progress into some cording, and then eventually it can uh, become a contracture where your finger actually pulls down to the palm. Um, and it is important to get in to see your doctor if you think that you might have Dupuytren's disease or if you're having any other types of hand symptoms, injuries, or difficulty with your daily activities that is new for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is part one, a little bit more about what Dupuytren's is, and I will see you in the next video where we'll talk a little bit about some treatment options and things that you can actually do to manage your condition, as well as some of the surgical options that are available out there. So I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.